Hey there, everybody. Fett here, and welcome. Fett plays Going Medieval. Going Medieval is a game that uh, came out in the Steam Workshop in early access, and I want to say July 2021. Don't quote me on that. Could be June. Uh, it's still in early access. And the best way I could describe this game is like Medieval Rimworld, but 3D. And that's if you want to describe it in like one sentence. Obviously, doing a lot. It's another simulation game, but it so far, I think, has a lot going for it. It's developed by a group called Foxy Voxel, as you can tell from the voxels and how quite foxy they are. And I wanted to play a little bit of it because I played it a little bit on my own time. I enjoyed it. Definitely feeling the RimWorld influence like fairly heavily with the way they've done some of the things, which uh, you go back farther and say that there's a Dwarf Fortress feel to it as well. But especially since this game has Z levels, RimWorld doesn't. And that is exciting. You know, Z levels give you the true 3D experience. See this tower? You can build it is what I'm getting at. So that's exciting. Anyway, I wanted to play it, give it a couple weeks, build ourselves a nice little town, maybe a little uh, little castle or something, and uh, try to have a good time. So what do you say we jump into it? By the way, if you wanted to check, there's a road map. This is where we are right now. Apparently caravans and trading are in the game. That wasn't there when I was testing it a few months ago. And all this stuff is planned. So uh, enjoy taking that in while I go to new game and get ready to start. So basically... You start by choosing your difficulty. I'm going to go with standard. Standard means you will get raids. They'll occur at steady intervals and their difficulty will adapt to your, to your, I would say colony, but I guess village would be a better word here. Peaceful means no enemy attacks, you know, if you want to play like that. And survival means you're going to die if you want, you know, if you like Rim World on hard mode. There's actually, an also, there's also real hard mode, which I actually don't know what this, I assume these play with the numbers and these just play with the raids up here at the top. That's what I'm guessing. Anyway, let's hit next. Then you choose your starting conditions. A new life is your basic, you know, crash landing start where you get, uh, you know, all your resources. You get enough stuff to start off. You get some weapons, spears and short swords. You know, I said medieval. I wasn't kidding. Uh, number of settlers, three. You get a middling age there. You know, they got height and weight to them. It's pretty great. They have religion to them. It's pretty interesting. And we got some starting ale, so what's not to love? Uh, Lone Wolf would mean you just start by yourself, of course, with almost nothing. And then add new means you can just make up your own scenario. We're not doing that. We're going to start with a new life and see how it goes. Each settler has a story about the past they left far behind. But now, this tattered group has a common goal. To build a new home together. And then we pick where that's going to be. And you get your heraldry and stuff. See, you can, you can do your settlement name right away. You can go uh, Ragamuffin Village. Yeah. And then check it. Heraldry. You can do whatever you want. And when I say whatever you want, I mean you got choices. I could even put a custom one in here if I was feeling it. That's the Foxy Voxel logo. It's adorable. You know, you get your colors. You go with the uh, green. You get your uh, your patterns for what you want it to be. You can just do, do that maybe with a little bit of a separate color on top. You know, eh, uh, it's too Christmassy. Oh, Give you a darker. There you go. There you go. Darker blue looks a little bit better. And then you can put your all the symbols you want on it. Yeah, it's pretty great. They did a or they started off with like a looks like four of these little floors all in a formation. You could do that if you wanted to put up that much work into it. Let's do a let's do a hammer. Rotate it a little bit like an owl. Uh, I guess we want it that way. Got to rotate it all the way. Yeah. Uh, give me like a thirty. Uh, Thirty-two. Looks about good. Then you can scale it as needed. Make it a nice gold. Golden hammer. A progress. Uh, what else do we have? Let's see. A cleaver. There you go. Hammer and cleaver. We build stuff and we eat animals. What else do you need to know? Can you? Yeah, you can flip this too. There you go. Beautiful. Excellent. Oh my god, that cleaver is so ugly though. Looks like it was finger painted on. I don't like that. I don't like that a bit. What is this one? A spear or an arrow? I think that's a pila. Can't tell 100% for sure. That's definitely an arrow. This is an axe. Yeah, there you go, an axe. 
I, I guess the lesson is that we we build stuff and we cut trees. There you go. And then you can put even more stuff on it if you wanted. You could put one of these in the background. Can you move them up and down? I want to say you could. But I don't remember how. Because like if I wanted this, uh, well, that's not going to work either way. I think it just depends on whether you put it in A, B, C, or D. Anyway, here, we'll put, a little, put this little guy up here as well. Move him up. Hey, there you are. <laughs> There's my little lion, dude. All right. Very cool. Very cool. How about a crown? Or a fire? Why a fire? Well, I mean, why not? But yeah, you could, you could make up whatever you want. You could put the hand in there. You could put another hand. There's plenty of hands to choose from. You got a, you got a nice muscle. You need to flex on the haters. You could do that. A little banner just to remind people who you are. It's beautiful. We're going to clear that out. There you go. It's, this is fine. Okay. And then you choose your starting location. Valley, hillside, or mountain. Mountains tend to have more limestone, gold, and iron, and silver. Less fertile soil, clay, and vegetation. Hillsides are in the middle. And valleys are fertile soil and less limestone. Let's go on the, the hillside. Give me a large map. And does this seed actually change dynamically? Oh, it does. Nice. That's really cool. Oh, there's there's all the valley you could ever want. Right there. We'll go in the hills. Yeah, we'll be we'll be hill people. Why not? Generate some settlers. So we got uh we got Garus, Pippa, and Rosia. But not really. We're gonna we're gonna have some other colonists here. Uh, I already got some volunteers from the Discord, so if you'll bear with me for a minute. We'll go ahead and get this all settled. So I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. We have uh, three little colonists here ready to go. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what we got going on here. As you can see, we got uh, we got a parish, we got a vasilla, we got a bale ale glass. Nominal name. Uh, and let's take a look at some of the skills that'll pay the bills real quick. Parish here, he's a charitable chef. He's got a whole background story. I did, this is all with the background and everything. You know, he was an enfant de cuisine. Famed chef to the great houses of England. Despite his snobbery, there's no denying Parish's culinary expertise regarding all manner of edible flora, fauna, and fungi. Anyway, so he has good culinary skills and some botany skills and some animal handling skills. He's also got a pseudonym, the Pirate of Wick. Parrish didn't do much to deserve this nickname. He inherited it. Inherited it. That's the word. From a long line of swashbucklers known for attacking and looting trading ships, Parrish, however, didn't sail and couldn't swim, apparently. He's 37. He's got some weight. He's got some height. Religious, religious alignment. I didn't really mess with this, but uh, apparently he is an Oak Brethren zealot. So there's two religions in the game. Oak Brethren and then Restitutionist. So, you know, old ways, new ways. And apparently he's way into the old ways, which means we need to, you know, build a temple to match that, basically, to keep him happy. And then we got his skills over here. Animal handling, botany, and yeah, you can see it, they, the numbers go pretty high. You can look over here. 25 is, like, right around halfway. So, you know, culinary skill, obviously really good. Carpentry, he can build wooden things decently. Construction, hopefully he'll get better at that over time. Intellectual. Marksman, medicine, melee, mining. Got all the M's together. Uh, smithing. Oh, it's because it's all alphabetical. Good, good, good observation. That smithing. He's not so good at that. That's okay. Speech crack. He's pretty good at that. Tailoring. Pretty good at that. And then you got your perks. You know the other things that make a person a person. Parashir is robust. He appears unassailable, bouncing back swiftly from injuries that would put others in the grave. So he has extra HP. Better motor function, better wound regeneration, which is pretty great. It's also a strapping uh, middle-aged lad at 37. Eh, is middle-ish. Uh, I'm getting there, so, you know. Uh, Parrish is strong as an ox. He's always hale and hearty and never laid low. I assume this means he'll get sick less, but I don't know. And benevolent. A ray of hope and an otherwise bleak existence that gives him extra speech craft points, which is pretty nice. All right. Also, the advanced customization tab down here lets you customize all of this. You get creation points over here, 510 for this particular one. And then you can do up whatever you want. I didn't change all of this. For the most part, I left a lot of the appearances alone. Obviously, did the name, the background. You get a choice of backgrounds and stuff. So I wanted a chef. I wanted, uh, some, I wanted a good distribution of most of the skills. I did notably leave out melee for the most part, which 
might bite us later. And you can add and remove perks. Wow, it's like they have Prepare Carefully built into the game. That seems like a really good idea. Someone should tell Tynan. Anyway, Vasilla is in the second position here. She's, uh... About the, uh she's actually a little bit taller than Parrish. There's one... Oh, no, that's, that's weight. That, you dummy. She's actually a lot taller than Parrish. Uh... And just a little bit heavier. Uh, Vasilla is a solitary grave digger. Well, was. Dug graves at Jedburg. You know. It was, uh... Oh, but it was a bloodied field at Creasy that she did her finest work. Cracked French skulls in the ditch. You with the very same pickaxe gave Vasilla endless satisfaction. Really good at mining. Pretty good at a little bit of extra on melee. Not so much on speechcraft. Pseudonym is the Broken of Jedburg. Said that uh, Vasilla's adventuring career came to an abrupt end when she took an arrow to the knee. She does have a funny walk. And that also gave her a, bit, a little bit of marksman skills. So she's got 20 in marksman, so she'll probably end up with a bow. Or a crossbow, if we get lucky enough. Carpentry skills, so she's good at working with wood. Mining, smithing. Smithing could be useful later. It's not really useful in the early game, if I remember correctly. And then perk-wise, uh, also an Oak Brethren, but not nearly as... You know, she's only devout. So you got practicing, devout, and then zealot. She's only devout, so she doesn't need as much as Parish, But uh, still wants that a little bit. Cold hardy, impervious to the cold. That'll help during winter. Night Owl feels most alive during the hours of darkness. Can survive happily with very little sleep. Extra sleep recovery speed. Less depletion speed. Nice. And hedonist. With a bit of excitement, Vasilla quickly gets bored and starts causing trouble. Quite the drama queen. So, there's the three perks for yours. And then finally, we got Bale Ale Glass in the third position. Dude is, uh, dude is a tower compared to the other two. You can see it on his little character here. Bookish Alchemist. Had become a disillusioned questing for the Philosopher's Stone. Sought the elixir of youth. Speechcraft. Intellectual. Botany. Medicine. He is also known as the Doctor of Ardwick. Saved a friend's life at 10 years old, earning the title of Doctor. Less well known was that he had abandoned many beseeching patients during the unremitting horror of the pestilence. It was a title burdened with secret shame. He's intellectual, which means he's good at studying, which would be very helpful. And he's a doctor, so he's got some medicine skill. He also likes smithing, although that's not as relevant as everything else. Also, everybody here is like really good at car carpentry for some reason. I feel like I could have taken points away from that and used it somewhere else, but I'm not going to mess with it too much. It's fine. Perk-wise, he's got an interesting mix. He's also an o Oak Brethren. Huh. Um, punch Drunk. If you share alcohol with Bale, expect a black guy or worse. He's angry drunk. Uh, that actually gave us extra points to work with. Um, swigger, which is he, he takes swigs. He does it a lot. It's thirsty work, you see. He likes to drink on the job. Makes him work faster. And Erudite. Rare intellect. Could even be called gifted. Learns extremely quickly. 30% extra XP gain. Seems like a lot. But that's what you get with it. And five in intellectual. So, let's see what these three can do when they adventure out on their own when I click the next button. Alright, so we got Ragamuffin Village with these three. Standard start, new life start, the past that left far behind. This tattered group has a common goal to build a new home together. Recommended for first time players. On the hillside. Show tutorial tips? Eh, yeah, sure, why not? Embark. And then it loads our map, and our adventure prepares to begin here in Going Medieval. This is, if you couldn't tell, it is set in England, and as you can see, it's set in the year 1353. Um, was it like low Middle Ages? I don't know. Um, so it's, it's, it's alternate history, basically. The plague had ravaged the British Isles, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Untold millions went to an early grave. And those left standing were plunged into poverty, brutally scarred by the horrors they had witnessed. Nothing would ever be the same again. As the cold retreated, heralding spring of the year 1353, Parrish, Vasilla, and Bale set off into the wilderness to claim a piece of land as their own, as was their right, in the eyes of God and under the law. Here, they may lay down the foundation for some kind of future. Perhaps hope will follow. Good land is there for the taking. In all four corners of this once mighty land, citizens are rebuilding in the hope that the horrors of the past few years can be left behind. It's possible there will be fighting, drought, sickness, hunger, but what of it? Life goes on, says Vasilla, and so must we. Into a landscape of rolling hills and ancient crumbling forts, the companions trekked. Each ascent rewarded Bale with a view that stretched for many leagues. No enemy approach would go unseen, he thought. 
They built a camp that would, in time, become the settlement of Ragamuffin Village. An excerpt from Liber Hermegamenda. Hermegamendanum. Herm... Uh, yeah, I think that was close enough. By the venerable Flavian. Flavian. All right. Good stuff. Okay, so here's the game. Welcome to Going Medieval. Bear in mind, it's under heavy development. Yep. Uh, you can control it with the mouse and the keyboard, believe it or not. And you can tilt and rotate with the middle mouse, which is actually going to be very useful. World layer. So yeah, Z levels. You can go up and down with control. It's going to be pretty great. And game speed controls. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Pause. So, very, very RimWorld-esque start. You're in the middle of nowhere. You got a bunch of stuff that's currently forbidden, and you gotta decide where to start. Look at this map rotation. Dude, this is, uh, this is unbelievable. I love it. I love a fully controllable map in a simulation game. And it's it feels like it's relatively rare as well. Also, look at the size of this map. They got a little valley over here. Hmm. Yep. Plenty of levels already. So, it looks like this area where we are is kind of the top of the hill. Hey, there's some clay down here just waiting to be taken. Beautiful, beautiful. Plenty of forest, too. So, that means plenty of wood. It's going to be nice. Uh, actually, now this looks like the, it's the top level here. There's not really enough to build a castle off of, so we're not going to worry about that too much. Uh, plenty of limestone over here, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like what we're seeing. I'm liking what we're seeing so far. But this does seem like the best place to start. There's some coal right here. That we could use later. All right, that's cool. As far as materials, of course, we got wood. Yes, we do. We got 400. How about you? We got linen. It's pretty great. We got a fine wooden buckler. Some linen gambesons. Got some armor. Got some cabbage. Mm-mm-mm. Food. Got some hay. Yeah, you can use that later. Uh, it's a ground type. Got some packaged survival meals, basically. I mean, packaged meals. It's the same thing. A sturdy steel short sword. Some healing kits. A good short bow and a sturdy long bow. So I think it's pretty pretty obvious. Vasil's gonna get the long bow. Just like Rimworld, you click on them and you right click what you want them to do. So equip this bow. Uh, it does require a certain level of marksman skill. So Parish, how you doing over here? Look like you're doing good. You got draft, attack, banish, cancel, be a flee from you know danger, be neutral, be, be aggressive, and you have the biography, their inventory. Right now they're wearing clothes. And yes, it does actually look different on them. It's pretty great. Skills, attributes, stat attributes. This is their uh, sleep alcohol requirement, which we are going to need some eventually. Food, religious activity requirements, entertainment activity requirements. Their moods. They got that initial optimism, of course, in the beginning. They need entertainment. They need um, religion. They're, they're fulfilled right now. They're fine right now. And then they have their health. They have any injuries. The injuries will appear down here. How much pain they're in. How their stomach is, you know, it's food and stuff. Um, consciousness, blood, hit points. Yeah, it's all pretty good. What's your marksman skill? Ten? What's Bales? Three. Okay. Uh, Parish, I guess you get the short bow. And then Bale, you get the sword and board, buddy. All right. Go ahead and equip your stuff first. Yeah, this is this is our first priority. All right. I know they're idle, okay? I'm, I'm just starting. There. And I guess since you have that, you're going to equip the gambeson. Oh, we've got a spear, too. Hmm. Now check it. See? He's all gambesoned up now. Ah, uh, is, is the spear two-handed, or can you use it with one hand and a shield? Because if you can shield and spear, that's even better. Nah, I can't. Okay. So the question is, do you do sword and board, or do you do... I think we do sword and board. I'd rather have the defense. Honestly. Okay. So now we got our start. We can unforbid everything by just clicking on it and hitting F. There you go. Oh, we got some books, too. Some Chronicles, which is a type of book. Helps with research. Please understand. And then we got all of our architect menu in the bottom left. We got stability. You see the position, the traversal speed. It's all good. You have uh, all your colonists over here on the left-hand side, including what they're doing, which is pretty great. So let's start with building. We got wood. We got... Do we have clay? I don't think we actually have clay, do we? We got our barrels of ale right there. And we don't actually have clay, so we're going to need to get some if we want to build clay houses. Which we probably will soon. But for now, let's get a let's get a regular-ass house going, shall we? Uh, I love the grid, by the way. Kind of tells you where everything is. So, it's going to be something basic for now. Let's do a 7 by 7 
That'll work for now. We'll put the door on this side, I think. So we have an option of a door. And you can see how it swings open, too. That's pretty neat, I gotta say. So a door there. And let's put a window in it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put a window in the back. There you go. Okay. And then eventually we'll put a roof on it as well. But this is a start. And they just start gathering the stuff here, and we start a building. There you go. We're gonna... Let's see, we have a couple options for roofing. A thatched roof, which will take that hay. But we kind of need that hay for something else as well. So we could go with a wicker roof, which takes sticks. Or we could do a wooden roof, which takes wood. Hey, someone leveled up their construction. Bale did already. Nice. And then you could also do half roofs if you want to get really clever with it. Campfires, butchering tables, basic research tables... Hey, sleeping spot's all we got to start with, so that's what we're going to start with. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. You're going to sleep in the hay. Alright. We can just do three right next to each other for now. It's a start, okay? You got your shrine right here. Restitutionist and Oak Brethren. A backgammon table, that'll be something for entertainment. Miscellaneous is some banners and the pyre. In case you want to get rid of people, you know? Yeah, you should, they should be dead first, by the way. Uh, we have idle people again. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and put in the roof. Like I said, let's... Oh, you know what? Let's gather some sticks. That's what we should do. So, the bottom right is all of your orders. I like this, by the way. I like how they do this. So, there's a chop for wood, obviously. So, boom. Eat that wood. Don't actually eat it. Tall grass will give you some more hay. So, we could use cut plants to get that. Or we could use the harvest button to designate plants to be harvested as well. So let's harvest. There's some mushroom over here, too. Um, do we have... I don't think there are any sticks, like... Oh, yeah, there are. There's bundles of sticks over here. There you go. 11 whole sticks, dude. And 54 clay. Okay, we could have gotten some clay. Um, now, let's make a, a wicker roof. You can see the hit points of the roof here. As well, wicker is stronger than thatched. And cover effectiveness, which is how good it would cover from, like, you know, rain. And thermal insulation as well. Different types, like a wooden roof is less insulative. Insulative? Is that a word? Than thatched or wicker. And we're just going to turn this around like that. Take 64 sticks. Make it happen, lads. Not enough beds. We're working on it. We're working on it. There's some berries over here. That's good stuff. There's a hunting order, of course. Allow, forbid, cancel, deconstruct, mine, all that good stuff is available here in this beautiful game. So yeah, you kind of got the, the gist of it, the start. And check this out. Oh, no, I can't see in my house. But if I lower my viewpoint, oh, and if I lower it too much, I can see underground. There you go. Yeah, now you can see what's in here. That is... I think that's really cool. The only thing I wish... I really, really wish this game had is a cutaway view. You know, like, if I'm here, this is... If you look at the top left, I'm at 6.5 is my elevation I'm looking at. Now it's 7. If I were here, I'd love to be able to look at this view and get a cutaway, where I could just see through the, all the walls that are around this level. But it's not like that yet. And I kind of get it. Anyway, we're all working right now. The bale's running as fast as he can. A little bit of a wild run, but he's, he's getting there. There you go. That's right, get them trees. Oof, them trees! There you go, take that tree. And he's like, I got you sticks right here. Alright. And the roof's going up. This I don't particularly like either. The way that the top part looks different than the wooden on the building, but... I think once you can make planks, you can make that look the same. Okay, we're idle again, so let's figure out something else to do. How about some flooring? You can do wood, or you can do wicker. So wicker floors, 95% speed, 0.4 insulation. 100% uh, speed, the wooden floors are just a lot better. <laughs> let's put it that way. Give me on the ground floor here, and then put in the wooden floors in here. There you go. And you don't need to put a floor where the door is, because they put something there for you. And either way, you're going to have your traversal speed lower. So, forbid allow. Yep. That's how you get your initial stuff. Construction. Settlers need somewhere to live. Place wooden walls in a rectangle. Put some sleeping spots inside. 
You can relocate structures. So this is actually new compared to when I played it before. So some structures can just be rebuilt and moved somewhere else. Neat. And then your orders. Issue orders with the ones in the bottom right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. We got it. We got beds. Yes, we do. We got beds. How about you? Not only that, but if I were to click in here and go to info, I think it's an info. Uh, let's see. Hey, sleeping spot, nearby furniture, description, wooden floor. There's somewhere where you can actually see what kind of room this is. But there's also this one of these up here. That tells you. Because different rooms? There you are. Aha. So this is technically a shared bedroom. Which means that there's a little mood bonus for sleeping here. So you want to make different types of rooms. You're actually encouraged to. Alright, let's make a storage spot as well. Before I forget, because I will forget. So give me another 7x7. Seven seven. You know, we don't need to be too creative yet. We're just starting. Alright. Another 7x7 seven seven with a wooden door here. And eventually we'll put a roof on it. I guess it'll be another wicker roof. Why not? Okay. On the top. Uh, rotate it. There you go. We don't need a... I feel like we don't need... A... Window in our storage room. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Okay. So now... Yeah, we got wood floors in here. Nice. What we don't have in here yet is light, but that's okay. We'll be fine, in theory. Okay, as we do that, let's go ahead and put down some flooring in here, too. Wood's relatively easy to come by, in my experience, so... As long as that's the case, I think we'll be okay. Alright. And after that, I need a zone. Stockpile zone! You got your defaults, you got your dumping, and you got your warfare zone. Actually, that's new to me. Okay. Thank you, Parish. Oh, construction failed. How dare you? How dare you do that to me? What time is it? Let's see. 13.53, spring, day one, 17th hour. Okay, so it's like 5 p.m. It's 10 degrees Celsius outside. It is clear as day. So we're getting... We're just, you know... It's a start, as you do around here. Everything starts somewhere. Okay, now the flooring's all in. Turn this into a stockpile. Cool. So in the stockpile, you can see they actually designate the stockpile with these little ropes. Which looks neat. I actually think it's a nice touch. To be honest with you. Why are we not building this one spot here? Like, I can get why these aren't getting built. We probably need more sticks. That's not a big deal. Boom. Get us more sticks. Okay, after this, we need to start looking at a place to eat. Like, to cook food and to eat. We need a table as well. Um, there's a great hall, which is a place where you can, you know, make your meals. Eat your meals, I should say. Every meal tastes better when made in a great hall. You can give everyone their own bedroom, who, of course, it'll give them a bigger mood boost. Oak Brethren tape or Chapel. Temple? Temple, yeah. Restitution Chapel. Brethren Temple. Get it right. Library. Of course, research will be better there. Uh, workshop. Workstations in a workshop work faster. And in a kitchen, stoves and butchering tables work better and faster. And then the spare room gives no bonuses. So this is a spare room, technically. Is. This is not a special room. Please understand. But that's okay. It's our stockpile room. That's literally all we need it to be. Okay. Yeah, once these trees are down, we should get enough sticks to finish this off. Very cool. I like it. Is it bedtime? It's not bedtime. It's only 21 o'clock. We got time. We got time. Alright. I, I think these logs are kind of, like, really ugly. But it's a, it's a starting village, okay? We're starting somewhere. Please understand. We left all of this hay here. In fact, we didn't even unforbid it. <laughs> Let's get it moved inside. Okay. So, of course, when things are inside, they won't deteriorate nearly as fast. Some of them won't deteriorate at all, but I'm pretty sure the cabbage still will. Yeah, it's 86% fresh. Please understand. It is on the stockpile, though, so that helps. That helps a bit. Yeah, this one's actually decomposing, though. So, yeah. 
And it looks like we're going to bed. And by we, I mean Bale. What are you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm doing stuff, man. Leave me alone. Alright. There you go. You can actually follow him, too. Nice. Alright. Night one, we got some berries next to us. Some red currant shrubs. That's pretty good. Packed with goodness. They're delicious. There's some rocky soil underneath here. I don't know if that's directly useful, but it could be at some point. And we can look at building walls right away. There's actually... I mean, you played RimWorld. You know these simulation games. You know how they work. There's a lot of opportunity here at this point. A lot of things we could do. This could go in a lot of different directions. So it really just depends on where we want it to go. Clay walls are actually not as strong as wooden walls, but they are way better insulators. So that'll be good if you want, you know, food storage, for example. You want it to stay at a certain temperature. That's how you do. And we're going to do that eventually. You'll see. You'll see. Stairs, of course, are going up and down. Butcher table. Campfire. Easy, breezy little place to do some, you know, quick cooking. Might have to make a room for that. In fact, I think we will. We can go ahead and attach one right off of here. Um, five? Yeah, let's do a five. No, a six. There you go. Like that. And then another door in here. Uh-huh. No, no, I guess a five would have been better, huh? Yeah, yeah, never mind. Um, cancel. I do this every time. <laughs> okay, like that. All right. So this will be our first, our first eating area, kind of. So give me the butcher table. Uh, not eating area, but cooking area, I should say. Butcher table, campfire. I said campfire. Thank you. Cool. And then eventually we need the research area. So that might go on the other side over here. Let's see, how much space does it take up? It does take up a little bit more space, but I think that'll be fine. So if we were to put down the order for it, we would do another like this. Right? Did I do it right this time? I did not, because the door goes here. Oh, God! Okay. Clear that out. Door goes here. All right, I am going to want some windows here. So put a window in the back. You put a window on the side here. The windows are actually functional, by the way. You can choose to have the window open or close. And that will make a difference in temperature. So, you know, it's it's not a, not a nothing style decision. Please understand. You can also do uh, brazers for warmth as well and for light. And we'll have to do that eventually. I don't think there are eight without table penalties in this one. But I could be wrong. Not drinking. I don't need a drink. Cool. Initial optimism. Lacking entertainment. Lacking religious activities. I get it. I do. But, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Research is actually not a high, not a need, so maybe I should shut up. But we're going to do it anyway. Nah, let's do the... T let's get their religious needs out of the way. Okay. Throw a temple in here. Um, Throw it right here. There you go. Little temple. Torch on each side. I don't think we have anything else available for it, though. We got fences. Nice. Yeah. This will be fine. And then place to make food happen over here. And then, of course, on top of those, we should probably think about a growing area soon. Can't yet, though, because we actually do need research to do that. Yeah, believe it or not, we don't inherently know how to do farming. I mean, that kind of makes sense. But yeah, this will be fine. Food on one side, you know, religious needs on the other. It makes sense to me, dang it. Alright, getting that uh, temple up real fast. Never mind, no we aren't. <laughs> Bail goofed it. <laughs> My dude, why? No, oh, we're gonna need more wood, aren't we? Probably. Let's Get in uh, order for more wood. Eventually we can plant trees, but we just need to make sure we're getting enough of them first, you know? There we go. Hey, the torch got done. Thank goodness you guys know how to light fires. Hey, the... Ooh, yep, yep, yep. Production. Yeah, start something. Select the workstation. Add a product from the product list. There's an until you have mode to make them keep doing it until you run out. 
Meals! Regular meals. Uh, ten meals, yeah. Meals require cooking material and fuel, which would count as fuel in this case. So that'll work. Yeah. I didn't put in orders for roofs over these, so that's just something to keep in mind as well. And butcher meat. Forever. One's pretty easy. Hey, our spare room is done. Huzzah! Now if I click on the floor, it'll tell me that it's a spare room. This one will tell me it's a shared bedroom. I didn't realize the roofing was not done there yet, apparently. Okay. Speaking of... I guess... I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Right? Just keep going with this kind of roof? Is that about right? It's gonna look kind of weird jutting out the sides like that, but I think it'll work. What do you care if it looks a little weird? I don't care. Yeah, this looks, what are you talking about? It looks great. <laughs> this is perfect, and I won't hear anything of it. Honestly, if I just swapped this one to look to go in the same way, it would look fine. So maybe I do that. It's a little bit of work, but, you know, it's honest work. Yeah, all you gotta do is turn it around. Boom. Wait, nope. Boom. Like that. Rebuild it. And it's a longhouse. Kind of. Alright, so is this a temple officially? No, it needs flooring. No room is a room unless you got flooring in there, too. So... Wood floor in both of these. We'll get done over time. It's fine. It's fine. You know, every colony starts somewhere. Idle. Oh, we gotta get more wood? Welcome to Going Medieval, the quest for more wood. Okay. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. And, of course, you have your storage over here to the right. You got some cabbages. You got some red currants. We got six package meals left still. We got eight mushrooms. And we got 11 stews. Someone's been cooking. They must have been good looking. All right, good stuff, team. Yeah, we're getting stuff done right quick so far. Beautiful, beautiful. And of course, you know you do have to keep a little bit of an eye on their clothing and stuff because Parrish's uh, winter clothes are practically half destroyed already. Well, thankfully the gambeson is in perfect shape. That's nice. The bow is in perfect shape, too, thankfully. So we're not doing that bad. Anyway. That, I think... Oh, did we get the roof done? We did. Okay, that's good. That's good. That is gonna be it for this first episode of That Play is Going Medieval. Like I said, I want to play this for a little while. Feel it out. So let me know what you think. It auto-saved. It knows what we're doing. <laughs> let me know what you think of Going Medieval. Have you played it yet? Are you having fun with it if you are? Do you think it takes the RimWorld formula, which it's obviously taking inspiration from, RimWorld, Dwarf Fortress, etc. I think this is one of the better, if not best, attempts to translate it into three dimensions I've seen. So, I'm excited for it. It's like it's still a super early access, but which is not a bad thing, because that means they're still working on it. And we've seen some updates come throughout the last couple of months, so they're actively working on it. Which has me excited. I like how you can see the glow of the torches from out here. That's actually like a really cool touch. It's like a really small touch, but it's a really good one. Anyway, enough gushing over the game for a minute. That's going to be it for Going Medieval for today. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe for more. And I will see you next time here as we continue to go medieval.